a pleasure to have you in episode eight of Real Steps, where we give the industry a bite-sized real estate market update while we get our steps in. How does it feel? Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much. Today was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed uh, today's twist on being on a paddleboard. Yeah, so you don't want to get steps, I, you want to get yeah. uh, strokes in, right? That's right, Nice, absolutely. I like the change up, I like your style. Yeah, there's no way I could beat you in a race on the ground, but on the <laughs> ocean, maybe. Maybe I stand a chance. Well, I competed in rowing for actually 12 years, so I think, uh, I don't know if you're up for a race for a challenge, but it might be a good match for me. I think so, that'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> we'll do it. Awesome. Well, as the office leasing manager at Reliance Properties, I'm very excited to hear about what you're seeing in the office these days. I mean, in terms of the office leasing market, it's the first time in a while that we've seen a balanced market in Vancouver. Uh, what is Reliance doing nowadays to attract tenants to your buildings? And yeah, what are you doing to differentiate your offering? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one thing we've done a really good job of uh, over the you know, the course of my experience with Reliance, both you know working for another firm and now in-house, is uh, Reliance does a really good job of turnkeying spaces, trying to anticipate what a typical office tenant would need, and then delivering that to the marketplace. You know, even before we maybe have a tenant that signs a lease, and so that you know gives us the opportunity to deliver space very fast and, and hopefully in a in a way that you know attracts a, a very typical office tenant in the city of Vancouver. So what we're doing now as the market becomes a bit more a bit more balanced and you know we're fighting a bit harder for deals is that we're just trying to really enhance the tenant experience by designing space that is uh, really uh, inspiring and you know allows companies to be creative and more collaborative and to help facilitate that tenant experience to get the workers you know from work from home get them more engaged in coming back to the office and what do you think is going to happen in the office EC market in the next year maybe let's say the next three to four quarters what are your predictions yeah i mean i mean of course as a landlord i'm, I'm biased i'm long in the office market i i believe in it i think that you know, workers are better together, whether it be, you know, the camaraderie of your office mates, whether it be mentorship from, you know, more experienced people in the office. It's important that we get together and physically meet. So I think that the office market, you know, may see, you know, continuation of uh, some instability and apprehension in the marketplace. But I think over that horizon that you've described, um, I think that we're going to see a stabilization of the vacancy rate and, and perhaps even a, a return to a bit more of the Vancouver normal. Absolutely, I agree. But you know what? I think we got to get to our challenge, and I can't let this beautiful outfit go to waste for paddleboarding. I think this is the fanciest I've seen somebody paddleboard before. <laughs> right? I'm dressed appropriately. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. Should we go for a quick race yeah. and come back? Absolutely. Let's do okay, it. Let's do it. Dan, you were quite the competition. I lost fair and square, I gotta say. That was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And your outfit definitely paid off to like help you pick up speed. Yeah, definitely. I was, I'm able to stay warm in this. So. <laughs> absolutely. We needed it today on this hot, sun, hot sunny day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, let's get back to it. So my next question is, when it comes to uh, TI construction costs and economics to build, what, where are you seeing end users spend money and how are landlords adjusting their TI allowance contributions to manage what's happening in the market nowadays? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're certainly seeing, uh, you know, when we turn key spaces or when tenants design spaces, um, it has to be very flexible and, and open to those users, those actual tenants. So we're seeing a lot more uh, designs for hoteling and building um, meeting rooms for tech integration, so audio visual, you know, allowing people from home to, you know, have a relatively seamless meeting in the office space with those that are actually there. Um, we're also seeing, um, you know, other design elements like, you know, placing the printer across, you know, the, the whole entire office in order to, you know, facilitate people getting up and walking around and so having some sort of motion. Uh, built into the space just by its design, you know, is, is actually really important. And on the other hand, we're also seeing that it's really important to deliver space very cost effectively and in a very timely manner because lead times right now for construction are quite long and, you know, it just simply takes time to get, you know, the design process done and the permitting done, and then the actual construction done. And also to do that in a cost effective way is really important. So, yeah, you know, we're certainly seeing, you know, some construction costs and some materials, you know, such as glass, which is so important right now right. to allow natural light to flow through a space and for it to feel open and, and feel welcoming to the tenants. But you know, we're seeing that that cost is, is making it difficult to, you know, to, to, to put into, into deals. 
Absolutely, yeah. The construction cost is outpacing the real estate cost for the first time in a long time, right? Yeah, absolutely. There is certainly some separation there. Yeah, we're not seeing the, the rental rates uh, chasing the construction cost increases whatsoever. So. Well, on that note, let's talk development cycle. What are you seeing are the biggest impacts to the development cycle nowadays? Yeah, I mean, I would think, you know, uh, you know, the uh, the cost to build for sure is absolutely uh, a very important consideration for whether or not a project goes forward or not. Um, you know, at the same time, you know, the carrying costs, the interest costs, you know, for whether it be a construction loan for actually building or even just for, for purchasing land and, and holding it uh, is making the economics more challenging. So. Uh, I really don't know what we're going to see in the next wave of development, you know, and of course there's been some great projects develop, um, delivered lately. Um, you know, how long until the next big wave kicks off in the city? Um, time will tell. We'll see, I guess. But thank you. You're a huge source of knowledge. It's been so insightful to meet with you today, Dan, and it's been such a fun paddleboard session as well. Thank yeah. you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was tons of fun. And I got to ask, last question is, how many strokes do you think we got in today? Yeah, I mean, we were we were on the boards for a while, so uh, I'm, I'm going to guess, you know, a couple thousand for sure. Wow. Pretty good. Right? I think, yeah. Working our upper bodies. I like it. Definitely. <laughs> nice. Well, thanks so much for coming and for everyone watching. Please like, subscribe, and reshare the episode if you enjoyed it. Until next time.